The standard state free energy and the equilibrium constant are both a function of temperature. For the equilibrium constant, we can write natural log k versus 1 over t in a linear format. And we can write standard state free energy versus temperature in a linear format. As long as delta h and delta s are relatively independent of temperature, which they generally are over broad temperature ranges, these two equations will be straight lines. So if I plot for, say, an endothermic reaction, delta G versus T, the fact that it's endothermic determines something about the intercept, because the intercept is determined by delta H. So an endothermic reaction will have a positive intercept. The slope is determined by delta S. So if delta S is positive, the slope will be negative. The negative sign is built into the equation. If I plot natural log temperature versus 1 over T for an endothermic reaction, now the intercept and slope kind of reverse their roles. Now the slope is determined by delta H and the intercept by delta S. So the intercept, delta S over R, and the slope determined by the opposite of delta H. So for an endothermic reaction, that's a positive delta H, you get a negative slope. So plots of delta G versus temperature and ln K versus temperature can be used to determine other thermodynamic variables, like the entropy and the enthalpy of the chemical reaction. Delta G versus delta T, useful linear plots. Let's summarize the relationship between the free energy and temperature and the equilibrium constant and temperature. We can plot them both in a linear fashion if we plot the free energy versus temperature directly and natural log of the equilibrium constant versus 1 over temperature. There's a couple situations to consider depending on the relative sign of the enthalpy and the entropy. For instance, if the enthalpy is positive and the entropy is negative and we're plotting free energy versus temperature, well, for free energy, the intercept is determined by delta H. So positive delta H, positive intercept. The slope is determined by delta S, the opposite of delta S because of this negative sign. So a negative delta S is a positive slope. For ln k versus 1 over t, now the slope is determined by delta H. Delta H positive with this built-in negative gives me a negative slope. And delta S negative gives me a negative intercept. We can continue, how about if they're both negative? And if they're both negative, interestingly, the two plots are qualitatively similar. Both have negative intercepts and positive slopes. Negative intercept for delta G because delta H determines the intercept. Negative intercept for ln K versus 1 over T because delta S determines the intercept. And they both have positive slopes because for ln K, the slope is determined by the opposite of delta H. And the slope for delta G is determined by the opposite of delta S. Both positive situation, again, these two plots will look qualitatively similar. Positive intercepts and negative slopes. What about the last case? Delta H negative and delta S positive. Here you'll have, for delta G, a negative intercept corresponding to that negative or exothermic enthalpy a negative slope because it's minus T delta S. For ln K versus 1 over T, the intercept is determined by the entropy. That's positive in this case. The slope is determined by the enthalpy with the opposite sign. So negative enthalpy, positive slope. So that's a summary of the various ln K versus 1 over T and delta G versus T situations.